So this is crazy. Look at this. It only takes six minutes. I mean, look at this. They say it's three feet longer than the old one. So many, that's what she said. Why can't people pick up their own trash? Today, we are at one of the only ultra-fast V4 superchargers in North America. We are in Atlanta, Georgia, where this 16 stall, 350 kilowatt charger has just been installed. We have a super low state of charge right now. We're gonna give you guys the charging speeds, check out the new dispenser with the payment area, all that and more, let's get into it. All right, so coming over here, first impressions, these things are tall. They're also really sleek. There's no hole in the center of them anymore. And then we come over here to the side, you'll see there's a payment screen. We'll get into that in a second. But when we take it off, you can kind of hear how it clicks because inside of that is actually the option for a CCS charger. Um, but if you're just using the Tesla end, as we are today, um, it looks just like a typical Tesla charger. Now, look at this. It is three feet longer than the previous cables. That's really nice because other EVs, the ports are not always right here. They're in different places on the different cars. Also, I'm gonna test and see if I can pull in and be able to reach the charger with our Model 3 today. Um, but the cable is lighter, it's thinner, and it's immersion cooled. These new immersion cooled cables outperform the previous liquid cooled cables you'll find on V3 superchargers. This makes them far more efficient in keeping the temperatures in check while you're pulling up to 350 kilowatts of juice out of the chargers. And speaking of high speed charging for your Tesla, how about beautiful high speed charging inside your Tesla? Thanks to Vine for sponsoring this portion of the video. So check this out. This is the ultimate hub for all of your devices. I love that it fits perfectly with your Tesla's design language, but it also gives you real time charging data. So you actually plug in these two USB-C's down below and it brings all the power up to the top. It's so easy to install. You just put it in the top right here, slide it in, Plug in the two USB-C's down below. The dual USB-C ports give you a maximum output of 54 watts. You also have two USB-A's so you can get multiple device compatibility. There's no drop in speed and you can effortlessly charge your smartphones, iPad, laptops, cameras, and so much more. Voila, and look at that. And it, the color just matches perfectly. It looks so OEM, just this makes sense and you can pair them up with the cutest wall charger inspired cables from Vian as well. They've also got ultra sleek and premium sun shades, cup holders, HEPA filters, pet liners, and more, all specifically designed for your Teslas. Check them out on Amazon and I'll link everything you need to know down below. So there is a little sticker right over here and it actually says that these cables are 615 amp nameplate rated cables. So I believe that they are actually the same superchargers that the Tesla Semi will be using. However, the Tesla Semi will have access to one megawatt of power or 1000 kilowatts, where these only have 350, which is still quite a bit, definitely more than our Teslas even have access to right now. One thing to note, and you can take a look, there's four cabinets back there and they're actually V3 cabinets. And I believe that that is the same for all of the V4 superchargers that are in the US right now. So we obviously have Georgia, we have Oregon, we have Alabama, and of course, Giga Nevada. It seems all V4 superchargers in North America are currently limited to 250 kilowatts. But with the increase to 350 kilowatts, you'll see much higher burst speeds. Tesla hasn't specified if they'll require additional hardware here at the station or it'll be a software update to enable it. But they have confirmed that charging up to 350 kilowatts could allow you to get up to 1400 miles per hour. Obviously your car won't be able to charge at those speeds the entire time. To achieve the 350 kilowatt speeds, your battery will need to be preconditioned and at a low state of charge. For Teslas, this is between five to 30%. If those criteria are met, you'll see a ramp to that maximum charging speed for a short period of time. All right, so. It does have the magic dock in there right now. It is not working because this just became operational yesterday. Also, you can see the credit card screen is not up and working yet. Now, non-Tesla EVs will be able to do everything through their app. And in Europe, they're actually mandated to have a credit card reader on the superchargers. Here in the US though, they do get incentivized with tax incentives to do that. So obviously Tesla's jumping on that as well. Um, but let's go ahead and plug in and see what our charging speeds are. Right off the bat, it is not recognizing the charger, but again, this is all brand new. So we're gonna go ahead though and plug it in. 
All right, there we go. It's starting to speed up and it turns to green. And let's take a look inside and see what speeds we are pulling. Okay, so we started at 19% state of charge. Um, we're down pretty low and you can see our speed right here. We're already at 257 kilowatts. So we're getting almost 1100 miles an hour. Obviously we're not gonna be able to get up to the full 350 kilowatt charging speed with our Tesla that we currently have, but I can't wait to try this out with a Tesla Cybertruck. So this is crazy, look at this. It only takes six minutes to go all the way up to 50%. I mean, this is mind blowing stuff right here, how fast it's going, really cool. When these are at the full 350 kilowatt speeds, you should be able to get 115 miles in five minutes. All right, so check this out. Right here, it has a dedicated trailer parking only. This is obviously for bigger EVs, possibly Cybertruck, um, but anything that would need a larger space i absolutely love this definitely could use this when we pull our bikes behind our car but it's nice to see this huge space dedicated for that i mean this would even work for the semi truck right here now here's something that i absolutely love check this out you don't find this at a first gen charging station we have a trash and a recycling i feel like every time i go to a charger there's just trash everywhere and we need to go back to japan where the people just know how to take care of their own trash. Okay, behind me, we have four different cabinets. Now, what's cool is we have 16 different chargers. Each one of these actually powers four different chargers. So you can do the math, four times four is 16. Again, these are actually V3 cabinets, so they haven't been upgraded to the V4 yet, but it's cool to see these with the brand new modern dispensers. Um, these are definitely future proof. So these are ready for anything that is yet to come out in the near future. I'm sure at some point I'll like look back at this video and laugh at because you know that everything is changing so quickly, but everything that we know about now and everything in the works, these should work on. I mean, why can't people pick up their own trash? Gross. So these V3 cabinets aren't rated for 800 volt EVs. So non-Tesla EVs with 800 volt drivetrains like the Audi e-tron GT, Hummer EV, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and 6, and the Kia EV6 would likely get slower speeds than advertised until these are upgraded. Now, unlike all Teslas, which have a 400 volt architecture, the Cybertruck is rumored to have an 800 volt capability. So there's either going to be a software update to enable that from these V3 cabinets, or they'll have to have some type of cabinet upgrade. All right, so the car is already done. I'm not done recording yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and go unplug it and get some shots for you guys. So we just went from about 20% to 60% and it only took about 10 minutes. Um, but check this out, the cable is cool to the touch. It's actually a pretty hot day. I had to take off my jacket, um, but this thing, there's no heat being emitted off of it at all. Um, again, these things are immersion cooled. So there is coolant going through here, cooling down that cable no heat at all. So before I came here, I was actually trying to look up what immersion cooling was used for. And it's used for big data centers. It's used for mining, like crypto mining, um, big things like that. Um, and it's being used now for our Tesla V4 charging stations. And again, no heat at all. So let's go ahead and unplug it. There we go. Again, this thing is really, really light, really easy to use. Um, I love how long it is. I'm gonna go ahead though and turn the car around because I wanna see if I can front face as well and if this will reach. I just have to check out how long this thing is. I mean, look at this. They say it's three feet longer than the old one, but it's almost the entire length of our Model 3 if you go from the back of the charger. I mean, it's, it's almost there. So let's turn around our car and see uh, how many places this thing will reach. I feel like it would work. So many, that's what she said. So many. <laughs> so we are nose in. Also, one thing that I really like about these chargers is that they're on the side. The ones that I saw in Europe were actually in the back. I love them on the side here. I just feel like it gives you a lot more options when you're going to charge your car. But let's go ahead and see if it will reach. All right, so here we go. So I could, if the charger was on this side, it would 
probably be able to reach. I could actually go forward about another foot and a half. Um, so if you had an EV where the charger was at a different location, you definitely could reach, kind of depending on how you choose to park your car. For Teslas though, I would still probably recommend backing in, even with the charger location here and the long cables. But you know, if you had a Lucid or Rivian or any other vehicle, there's different options. This charger actually just popped up last night on our map. And look at this, across the street, there's another charger right here. It's a V3 charger and it has a five minute wait. These people don't realize that there's another charger right across the street. If they only knew. <laughs> Next time on Kim Java. We started a GoFundMe for you on our last video. It will continue oh to grow. We're gonna my get your information. <laughs> We're gonna get all your information. Oh my goodness. I'm trying very hard to like just hold myself together so I'm not like breaking down. I'm supposed to be grown and all of that, you know. But, but you also haven't slept in 24 hours because you grow is... all night <laughs> doing ride share. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this content. And if you want additional content, exclusive footage, pre-release of episodes, and so much more, please consider supporting the channel over on Patreon. It takes a lot of time, money, and effort to bring you the consistent content that we do, and it wouldn't be possible without your support. So check out the link down below, and we'll catch you next time.